So disclaimer, I have not a clue what I'm doing here. I am just extremely cheap and want to try to figure this out on myself. So do not follow this if you think you're going to be able to fix your own because I have not a clue what I'm doing. Oh well. Well, completely off topic of cars for the AER channel. Um, today, we're going to work on fixing this boiler. This is going to be a couple week project for sure. Around here, I do everything on a very small budget. And having a large shop and having to heat it gets kind of pricey in the winter, especially here in Iowa. Uh, last year, we had a week or two where we had 30 below wind chills. I am out in the middle of nowhere where it's all field. So we have a lot of wind out of the Northwest and it just blows right in. And it's, it's just expensive to heat the shop. That's all it is. So I've been looking for alternatives. And one of the things I've been looking at lately is a wood boiler for outside. I have the ability to get wood for very reasonable or at no cost at all. So I've been looking at these boilers, something that might need a little bit of work or need repaired to heat the 40 by 60 building that I work out of. These are about um, anywhere from 10 to $15,000 new for the size that I have. And I can buy a lot of LP for $15,000. What I did find was this machine. It's a 2015, or I should say this piece of equipment, machine. I don't know what it is. Um, it's a boiler. That's what it is. It's a uh, central boiler edge and it's a 2015. So it's nine years old. The life expectancy of these machines, they say is about 20 to 25 years. And anyways, this one is nine years old. So it's about halfway through its life expectancy, but it already has a leak in the tank. I bought this from an individual that hurt his back. He could no longer split wood, load it anymore. And it sat for the last couple of years and um, built a tank, leak in the tank. I don't know where it's at, but in between that, Birds have gotten in the chimney, made nests. There's a couple mouse nests in it that I got to look at the wiring and make sure that it's not chewed through. But overall, it's, it just needs work. So we're going to repair this. So hopefully I can heat this so I continue to do videos all winter long. I guess the Edge 550 is one of the early models when they came out with the Edge. It's a gasification furnace. So it actually not only gets the heat from the coals, but it reburns the smoke that comes off the wood. So it makes it more efficient where it's supposed to burn half the wood as the classic series. Bottom line is I bought this thing for 200 bucks and for $200, I think there's $200 of scrap here. So the least we can do is try to fix it. If not, we'll sell it for parts or we'll sell it for scrap. This leak is actually inside the firebox here. And I just got to clean it out. I started pulling back that where the heat exchanger is because these chains here are supposed to move, but they don't. So I got to burn all the creosote out of that. I think the leak is actually in the front corner here. That's the only place I could find wet ash. But before we do any work on this, I really got to clean it out. So it's not so nasty to be working in it. So we're going to back it in the shade. So it's not so hot and scrape the firebox. Sounds like a good time. Well, I got the firebox cleaned out, scraped out for the most part. So I had the back cover out of the firebox and this is where the heat exchanger is at. And with the heat exchanger is at, it is majorly built up with creosote. As you can see, all that is creosote that burns up behind there. And those chains are supposed to be free. Uh, so I got to try to get all of that cleaned out of there so the machine can be efficient again and work. That had to be one of the dirtiest jobs I have ever done. That was, that was pretty terrible. But I did get everything cleaned out. Come back here. I'm going to turn this light on. There you go. But the chains are all loose now. Box is pretty clean. I took this over to a friend's auto shop to use his smoke machine to kind of find leaks. You basically pump it up. That's neat. I got a helper now. Um, but anyways, you pump it up with smoke to find some leaks and systems. And I pumped it up to five PSI and it actually held for about 20 minutes and the pressure didn't change. Didn't see any smoke anywhere. So I still wasn't comfortable with it because I would say there's no leaks. I still think there was a leak. So I'm actually filling it up right now with water. I don't know how long this is going to take because it holds like 200 and some gallons, but we're going to fill it up with water and hopefully the pressure will find that leak. Maybe took about an hour, maybe a little bit more to fill it all the way up. And I wasn't seeing any leaks until it sat for just a little bit. And then finally I seen something come up a little bit on the floor. Usually I saw it running here in the ash box. 
but I could see that it was coming from the top. Came in here and there's a tray that was bolted here that I had to remove for a shield. A bunch of buildup that I had to scrape anyways. And what I found was a leak right here. So this is a pass through for air to get through. And it's hard to see. I took a little bit of a die grinder wheel, but it's hard to see in here. So what happened here is they welded this pipe in to be a pass through and then they smoothed it out too much. And it actually cracked where the weld was on the pass through. So I can actually just keep wiping this and water just keeps coming. So what I'm gonna do is get a wire brush and uh, clean this up all really good. And then weld a bead. I don't know if I'll come all the way around. I'm gonna definitely start right here and go down to the bottom for sure and see what happens. But in order to do that, I have to drain 250 gallons or 205 or whatever it is out of this tank. So I'm sure that's probably gonna take longer than it took to fill it, but nothing else to do other than to do it. Drained it out, brought it back in the shop and uh, it sat for a couple days. So hopefully everything around that weld is dried up before I weld it. I definitely took a wire wheel to it on the grinder and cleaned it all up. So let's see what it looks like. So, so right along this line right here where it's fresh rust, you can see where it was leaking. I'm gonna go ahead and try to weld that. Not a professional welder, but I definitely tried. We'll see if it holds or not. I'm not sure. We'll go fill it up with water now. Uh, not the prettiest. I'll show you what I did do. So I actually ended up making two passes. This was the first one right on the crack and went right beside it. Back on this thing. It's been about a week since I originally welded it. I had to have a buddy Willie come over and help me weld on it a little bit because uh, I was just chasing the leak a little bit. So we ended up grinding it all off, started over and have 99.9% .9 of it covered. I showed you what that crack was or where it was leaking initially. Right now I'll show you what we have for a leak and it's so minimal it's tough to worry about but if I don't get it watertight obviously uh, it has a potential to crack again and uh, it'll still eventually lose water here and there. Right now it's kind of tough to get in here to see but right here is where it's leaking a little bit. You can see where that rust is. This is from it sitting overnight. And there's actually no water sitting there. I can just tell that it's rusted there. So it could have been from this. But as I zoom in on this, this right here is a water drop that happened from it sitting overnight. Willie had welded, double welded the bead top and bottom thinking we might need it there. And we stopped finishing it there. We're trying to weld on it as little as possible, but obviously we have just a little bit of leak there. So he was right, I was wrong. We'll go ahead and uh, tack that closed and then get right down here in this seam. That crack's been kind of a pain because it's had moisture in it and as we weld on it, sometimes it kicks back on us or some water comes through and it just leaks underneath the weld. We finally ground it out enough that it welded pretty decent. That makes me pretty confident that we'll be able to seal it up for good. It was just, uh, they ground the weld too smooth there and that's why it cracked. But in the meantime, I am going to power up the board and see what we have there. So what I've done is it's a 110 system. I did, I took the wiring off that they originally had. They just cut it when, they, when I bought the machine. I took a drop cord that I didn't have an end on and I went ahead and just attached it to the wire nuts there. And we'll go ahead and of course, plug it in. In this machine, they have the on off button right above where the wiring's at. So we'll click it on. All right. You can see that this little plastic's been broke here. I hit power, nothing's happening. Oh. Well, that's neat. My screen there doesn't look too promising. I am not sure what I am looking at. Oh, there's a one, but that one's... Not really sure what these flashing lights mean. I have the owner's manual somewhere. I'm gonna have to dig it out and look. What I can see is the screen's not working. We may end up pulling that apart and seeing what we can, or I'll just call and price and see what a new one is. I really wanted to get it working just to make sure everything was gonna work the way I wanted it to before I trenched all the water line and got it out here. Well, we'll check it out. Got that box out, wasn't too bad. Had all nice little wire nut type deals that unclicked. So disclaimer, 
I have not a clue what I'm doing here. I am just extremely cheap and want to try to figure this out on myself. So do not follow this if you think you're going to be able to fix your own because I have not a clue what I'm doing. Oh well. This part, took the cover off of it and then unbolted the board from the back of it. It had some nice studs on it. Here's the board. Here's the screen we were having problems with. If we come down here, you can see that there's a part number on it. I ran this. There was some on eBay, but not this exact one. Um, I have a friend that messes around with electronics, and he was able to find one that was from DigiKey, which is very similar. I'm going to turn this over. And there is 28 pins when I counted. You can see that that's just some solder joints on there. The nice thing about this is that the board's not sealed up. There's no epoxy on it. So we should be able to just heat those solder joints up, drop the new display in it, and then heat them back up and solder the new one in. I did call to see what a new board would cost because this display was out. And they said I needed to order the entire display panel and the control panel for the, uh, for the machine. And that was just under $600. I looked up this part and I can order just this screen right here for like $3.50. So I ordered two of them with shipping. It came out to like 15 bucks. So I think for $15, it's worth the risk. And if that's the case, then it's just going to cost $15 to fix the board rather than $600. And I've said this before, I'm cheap. This thing, as I'm looking at it right now for the burner, whoop, yeah, that thing is, uh, to be right honest, I, I looked it up, I priced it, and they're just under $15,000 new. I didn't pay near that. I will say I paid under 1000 for it with a leak and with the display not working and needing a ton of cleaning. I am really hoping that we can make it work and we'll have a bargain because I'm all about bargains. So I'm cheap. And uh, if it works out, we're going to be able to heat this place and work on projects all winter long. I mean, this radiant tube heater up here, it works really well. Uh, it's fairly efficient. It keeps concrete warm, but it can be expensive. Uh, last year, we had some days that were 20 below with the wind chill. And it just to be out here to turn the heat up, make it comfortable, which I know I'm fortunate to have a heated shop. I'm not saying that I'm not, but uh, it does get expensive. And I really want to save as much money as possible. So stocking a little bit of wood here and there into that thing and heating the shop with a heat exchanger, not such a bad deal. I mean, it's not that exciting, but um, anything I can do to help kind of cover the bills around here and do the things that I really enjoy helps me budget for you know fun things like that or like this or like uh yeah that it is exciting for me uh, i like fixing things in general i like bargains i like good deals and i really like taking something that was somebody else's junk and just making it work but anyways that's uh that's it on the uh, central boiler saga so far i've rambled on about this uh boiler project way too much, way too long. Uh, next time I post, hopefully it'll be more on Project Gene over here. I know it's not cars. I know it's a boiler project. Not too exciting for you guys. It really is something that I have to do around here to make the world go around. Um, that way I can get back on to projects like this. I appreciate you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the video. Comment if you want to see more stuff like this for these budget finds and what I do around the shop to make it work. Otherwise, just keep watching and we'll continue finishing the AER projects.